Since I was a kid, I have always loved creating and performing, acting, making videos. So naturally you would think that when I graduated high school, I would have gone into the creative domain, into the arts. But no, I took the advice of family and other people who said, you need to get a real job and you can do that other stuff as a hobby. So I decided to become a teacher. I told myself that being a teacher is kind of like being a performer. You're up there in front of the students, you have an audience. It's kind of very similar to being an actor. I very quickly learned that it is nothing like being an actor. <laughs> and there were way less stressful ways for me to make a living than teaching. And yet, I stayed a teacher for 15 years. And I remember even at the beginning when I was applying to the teaching program, all the way through teacher's college, through my teaching internship, and every single year that I was a classroom teacher, I knew this was not fulfilling my calling. This did not fill me up. It was a career that did not make me happy. It was not, I was not suited to be a teacher, even though I was good at it and the students loved me and there were lots of things about teaching that I did love, it didn't fill that creative need I had in my body. Stephen Pressfield is the author of The War of Art, and he calls these careers that have a proximity to our heart's calling, but that ultimately leave us feeling kind of unfulfilled. He calls these shadow careers. The safer career with a steady paycheck, and they allow you to get through life on a direct, well-trodden path. He writes that shadow careers are metaphors for our true calling. You could say that these careers are a different way of expressing our life in a way that is not true to ourselves, but gives you a taste, an unsatisfying taste, because unlike a metaphor, shadow careers don't usually activate your imagination. Compared to following our passions, a shadow career has very little risk. Whereas if we follow our passion, it is full of unknowns. And because of that, it's a terrifying decision. And often we don't know exactly what our passion is. We know what we are interested in, what we like to do, but because we can't see the whole journey, it's just way too scary to go in that direction. So often we'll get to different points in our life where we're standing at a place where two roads diverge, either when you're graduating high school, when maybe when you finish a first degree in university or you're going back to school, and you're making a decision. What direction in life should I go? And life isn't easy, especially if you want a family, children, a home. There are a lot of responsibilities and it makes sense that most people don't choose the riskier path. They don't choose becoming a novelist, becoming a musician, because 
the employment rates are much lower in those jobs than in traditional jobs. So it's completely understandable that people take the safer route in life. But just because it's the safer route doesn't mean it's the easier route. The thing to remember with all of these people on their steady career path is that not everyone is creative. If you are a highly creative person, you need to be creating every day preferably all day to be fulfilled. There's just no escaping it. Being creative is kind of a hard hand to be dealt because we live in a world where it can be difficult to make an income in the arts. And if you choose to commit to the creative journey, you may have to have a change in your lifestyle expectations. You might never find the kind of success that brings you fortune. You may have to be content with a simple life. There are no guarantees. There are no guarantees just because you work your butt off that you will find a pot of gold at the end of all your hard work. And perhaps you'll find a shadow career that you really enjoy and that does let you scratch that creative itch on a daily basis. That's amazing. That's what many of us creators long for. But if you can't find that, it's going to be imperative to find a way to work on your creative calling whether it is to stay in a shadow career, to do a shadow career part-time, or to completely abandon that journey and turn toward the journey of honoring your passion. It took me 15 years before I left the teaching profession, even though I knew every single year that that was not the career I was meant to have. It's not easy. And I would love to hear from those of you who are living by the income from your creative calling. And those of you who are in shadow careers and hear both sides of your story. Do you have regrets? Are there things that you miss from the other path? Thank you to Stephen Pressfield for writing such an amazing book, The War of Art. If you are a creative person, if you struggle with um, keeping up if you struggle with commitment to your creative calling definitely definitely pick up that book the war of art it is life-changing um, if you're at that place where you are ready to commit to that journey thank you for listening and thank you for looking at my art and i hope you drop in here again and see what i'm up to on this channel take care